good afternoon everyone uh, welcome to the uh, session of uh, peps industry lectures this is a new initiative started by iit hyderabad the curriculum in the masters so all master students will uh, go through one credit uh, course uh, where the lectures are covered completely by industry experts not the iit uh, faculty so this is a very good opportunity for students to uh, to know about the industry scenario get some practical uh, uh, view and uh, interact with the industry experts so uh, today we have a very distinguished uh, speaker dr uh, p balakrishna so let me begin by uh, briefly introducing the speaker and then uh, we will uh, get into the talk so dr balakrishna was born in hyderabad he received his mtech and phd degrees in electrical engineering from indian institute of technology madras in 2008 and 2016 respectively he is currently working as senior lead r&d engineer at office of innovation ge grid automation in smart grid domain at hyderabad technology center he has overall 11 years 11 plus years of industrial r&d experience at ge and about 2 years of academic experience working as assistant professor in school of electrical sciences indian institute of technology bhubaneswar his research interests include smart grid substation and distribution automation grid monitoring data analytics transformer or uh, motor asset management dms scada and ami coming to his uh, achievements so he holds 20 us patents to his credit out of which 11 are granted till date along with reputed publications in various international journals and conferences he is the recipient of several good awards including ge inventor of the year award in 2010 and ge silver award for 10 plus patents prestigious ramanujan young achiever award in 2011 ge imagination and courage award in 2012 energy management innovation excellence award in 2014 ge empower and inspire global award in 2015 Vera Young Scientist Award in 2019 and Innovation Excellence Award in 2020. So uh, this is uh, a brief uh, uh, profile of our uh, speaker today. Uh, today he will be speaking about uh, uh, if I uh, I mean the topic he will be introducing. He will be mainly speaking about uh, uh, relays, I believe. So uh, over to uh, Dr. Uh, P. Balakrishna to begin his presentation. so i uh, uh, we have about a uh, one hour of time so uh, let let's keep this interactive so if you have any quick questions uh, students are uh, free to ask the questions and uh, let's keep it uh, a very engaging and uh, interactive session so over to dr uh, balakrishna thank you yeah yeah thank you uh, very much pradeep garu for the uh, good introduction uh, so are you able to see my screen yes yes okay okay so thank you so uh, once again uh, uh, good afternoon to everyone and i welcome uh, 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 all the uh, students and the professors for this session so uh, today's topic is uh, uh, digital protection relays uh, and uh, some of the technology advancements uh, and the talk is majorly catered to towards the uh, master students and uh, this is the same training uh, i usually give to uh, national power training institute uh, in durgapur and shivapuri to the master students as well um, so uh, i will be uh, majorly covering uh, the practical aspects of uh, digital protection relays and uh, what are the some of the recent uh, uh, things that uh, uh, we are uh, working at uh, ge okay so uh, coming to the agenda so, so i will uh, cover uh, the uh, brief features of uh, what uh, digital relays uh, i will uh, go through some of the protection logic designs how they are uh, deployed as application blocks uh, into the digital relays and uh, i will uh, cover uh, how a relay uh, can also be used for the asset management and then a brief uh, introduction to adaptive protection uh, uh, based on the uh, time permit okay so uh, coming to the definition of digital protection relay which uh, you might have heard and you might have studied in your uh, curriculum uh, basically a digital protection relay uses a microprocessor or microcontroller uh, to analyze uh, power system voltages and currents basically uh, in order to the main purpose is to detect the faults 
and uh, especially in the context of uh, when we say advanced digital protection relays the fault clearance time has to be uh, uh, drastically reduced when compared to the older uh, electromechanical relays so that is a main advancement uh, or the main uh, uh, benefit of uh, these uh, digital uh, protection relays apart from that there are various other uh, features and benefits uh, which we will be uh, covering uh, uh, in the next up upcoming slides okay so uh, when we look at the hardware architecture uh, or, or insight to, to the digital protection relay so uh, we have uh, uh, like uh, uh, it starts majorly with the collection of uh, current and voltage inputs which are very critical uh, in order to protect any machine in the power system so the ct and pt uh, what we call uh, in our instrumentation so the inputs will come to a transformer board uh, uh, which is inside the relay so these are nothing but a miniature uh, cts and pts which further take uh, one amp or five ampere inputs uh, from the ct or 110 volts uh, input uh, from the vt whose primary is connected to the uh, live uh, power system uh, machines or the power system lines okay so once the ctpt comes um, um, uh, so uh, the uh, next step is to uh, digitize the data uh, after doing a sampling and holding and uh, uh, the digital data is further process uh, sent to the processors for the further action okay so uh, uh, one of the advantage of uh, digital relay is that it has two dedicated processors uh, one is called as main processor and another one is known as co processor so uh, the main processor uh, is majorly responsible for executing the protection tasks uh, basically to run various protection functions uh, 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 related to voltages currents frequency all those things and it has various uh, logics uh, uh, settings uh, uh, how it has to execute how it has to function so everything is embedded as a logic uh, uh, inside to the uh, main processor board and the co-processor board or the second processor is majorly responsible for handling the communications okay so in the context of uh, smart grid uh, uh, communication is very very critical for any component or any device uh, so a variety of communication mechanisms and protocols are supported so all those communications are handled by a dedicated uh, second processor which talks to the uh, sensors which are downstream to the relay or uh, the upstream uh, uh, SCADA or uh, uh, substation HMI, uh, those kind of things, which act as a master station uh, to this relay. OK, so uh, uh, apart from processors, um, uh, the other things that are mainly required for the relays, uh, other inputs uh, in order to uh, smoothly execute the protection as well as the uh, uh, monitoring and control tasks okay so uh, the inputs uh, uh, apart from the voltage and current inputs uh, the relay also gets uh, digital inputs and analog inputs although it is not mentioned here so digital inputs are basically uh, the on off status of any uh, equipment or any component okay so for example a breaker status whether it is on or off whether the transformer fan is on or off or uh, the butchholes relay inside the transformer is whether on or off. So such kind of status uh, uh, messages, which are binary, are received as uh, digital inputs uh, to the relay. Okay. So apart from that, there are analog inputs. So uh, these analog inputs are uh, the sinusoidal currents and voltages. Whereas the analog inputs that I am referring to here is any signal like uh, temperature, pressure, or anything that is measured by a, a transducer or a sensor or a rtd so all those inputs are also connected to the relay as uh, analog inputs but uh, they usually come as either 4 to 20 milliamp signals or a change in uh, resistance uh, such kind of signals okay so apart from anal digital inputs and analog inputs uh, which are required to know the status of uh, different uh, uh, status and condition of different equipments there are also the output relays okay uh, again output relays can be uh, digital output relays as well as analog output relays so digital output relays are used to control any uh, component of the power system uh, like if you want to trip the breaker 
uh, from on to off uh, you send it that is a digital output command if you want to uh, 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 control any uh, capacitor bank uh, so all those uh, uh, all those things are sent as the digital output commands okay apart from that there can be analog output commands so analog output the best example of analog output is to control the tap changer like when you want to move tap changer position from one tap to another tap you can use the analog output or if you want to uh, uh, switch on the uh, some of the capacitors of the bank so all those uh, 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 things are executed as the analog outputs uh, by the relay okay and then you have power supply which can either take dc supply or ac supply and then you have watchdog to monitor the health of the uh, relay itself and then uh, the uh, serial communications uh, are also uh, uh, possible apart from the ethernet based communications uh, in the digital relay okay so uh, uh, all we have covered most of the components and the uh, last thing is the uh, time synchronization input okay so as you might have heard and uh, uh, studied uh, either in vamps or in synchrophasers that uh, time is very very critical in power system and uh, uh, all the uh, all the devices um, in the substation are expected to be time synchronized with respect to satellite uh, time re uh, reference so for that purpose uh, either uh, the relay can take the gps uh, input uh, as a interface or uh, it can also take IRIGB input. So IRIGB is nothing but a uh, inter-range instrumentation group. This is a standard and they define how uh, the time signal has to be transferred from uh, the source to the receiver and then from uh, receiver to another receiver, okay? So uh, this uh, represents how time uh, uh, as a message uh, is carried and then uh, this relay has to sync to that particular time, okay? So these are the major uh, uh, hardware uh, details of the uh, uh, digital uh, protection relay, okay? So uh, further, uh, this uh, digital protection relay uh, is considered as a combination of various uh, protection functions, uh, which are designed in a flexible manner in the sense that uh, each protection function uh, is a separate logic or a separate code. And uh, each function will enable or disable automatically uh, based on the presence of the corresponding input, okay? So for example, uh, uh, usually uh, as I told, in a relay you will get current input, voltage input, and from that you compute frequency, power, uh, energy, all those things, okay? So uh, essentially all the protection functions are either related to current, voltage, frequency, or um, uh, power uh, uh, based protection functions uh, and sometimes you have uh, like distance and differential protections okay so uh, for each of the protection function uh, the corresponding um, uh, input should be available as a signal input to the relay so as long as uh, the signal uh, inputs are available those functions uh, will automatically run and those functions will be executed uh, inside the protection relay okay or uh, there is an also option that user can any dis uh, disable any function at any point of time and uh, uh, enable any function also at any point of time uh, depending on the uh, context or the depending on the machine uh, where this uh, digital protection uh, is uh, operating okay so this is uh, one of the advantage of uh, um, uh, flexible design of the protective functions okay so all these protection functions uh, which i told uh, which are incorporated in the digital protection relay so they have been designed with respect to uh, a reference standard okay so in america we call that as ansi standard and in, in other countries we use like iec standards so all the protection functions are uh, designed in a standardized manner by adhering to the standards because uh, irrespective of the manufacturer like uh, ge or siemens or abb the protection relay behavior should be uh, same uh, inside the substation okay the uh, the way it protect the asset the way it controls the breaker should not uh, uh, vary drastically okay so that is the reason uh, why these standards are in place and uh, play a critical role in ensuring that uh, all the protection functions are uh, uh, designed with respect to the minimum expectations uh, that are set in the standard bodies okay so when we look at uh, Dr. Balkrishna, I have one question. Yeah, 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 sure. Previous slide. So uh, I am not aware of uh, these uh, codes, but then uh, how does this relate to uh, substation automation? That is uh, 61850 IED, uh, logical nodes, that kind of uh, thing. Yeah. 
yeah that's a good question um, uh, is it pradeep right yes yes yeah so see um, 61 850 is uh, majorly related to how do we further standardize the data within the protection function so for example these uh, protection standards were there from long time and uh, they were uh, available and being implemented from long time whereas 61 is like ex came into existence uh, from the last 10 years and now it is becoming uh, more standardized for digital substation so 61850 what it does is it takes this particular standard uh, uh, where they will mention some uh, like let's say for example uh, volts per hertz uh, is uh, easy protection function so it requires voltage and it requires frequency in order to execute okay so this volts and frequency signal in a normal relay means without 61850 the uh, data uh, can be written in any format uh, by the operator uh, he can write any name to voltage or any name to frequency it is not a standardized name okay whereas when it comes to 61850 enabled protection device so the names that are used uh, uh, for uh, uh, voltage and frequency will by default be as per the standardized names uh, given in the 61850 and all even all the protection functions there is a corresponding logical node where it defines the standardized names of the signals that are required and the control that is required for each of these protection function so basically 61850 automates the naming conventions of the signals uh, measurements and the control parameters that are required by each of the protection function whereas the ansi or the iec standard defines how a protection function should be designed or how it has to be executed in the field uh, is that answered your question pradeep yes yes understood yes yeah yeah, yeah. thank you thanks for asking that so uh, when we look at the uh, back side of the uh, digital relay okay Uh, uh so uh, this is the back side of a digital relay so one of the unique feature uh, this digital relay offers is the modularity in design okay so what that means by modularity is that so as i told in my previous uh, uh, slide the relay receives uh, various inputs like uh, current from ct voltage from pt uh, digital input analog input digital output analog output and various communication and time signature right so uh, Uh, at any point of time uh, at uh, any location uh, in any substation it uh, it may not be possible to use all the available uh, components in the relay okay so that's why it is designed in a flexible manner in such a way that you can remove any card so for example this slot uh, card is there if i don't require this i can simply remove that and i can if required i can place it at any point of time okay so for example here i have four banks uh, so uh, it can take uh, if i want all four as currents i can keep it if i want one voltage and three currents i can keep it if i want two voltages and two currents i can keep the corresponding card so this particular uh, design enables modularity and at any point of time you can either replace or you can uh, Uh, keep uh, back any of the uh, card that you require for your protection purpose okay so for example uh, uh, for communications uh, you have basic communications uh, like rj45 which we have in laptops such kind of thing or you can have advanced fiber optic communication so if you don't need advanced fiber optic communication you can just remove this card out okay so like that it can take either dc supply or ac supply it can run with any of the uh, supply type so like that it is designed in a very flexible and modular manner such that it caters to any of the application that is related to any of the machine in the power system or in the substation okay so uh, and one more uh, advantage uh, with this is uh, so for example in earlier days uh, if for example one particular uh, signal uh, is not Uh, working properly so in such case uh, you have to replace the entire relay box but here you just replace uh, this bank uh, just lift it out and just connect it and even the connection is like hot swappable in the sense you can uh, easily as easy as uh, disconnecting the charging cable from your mobile and uh, keeping back the charging cable so like that it is uh, flexibly and uh, modularly designed okay so uh, 
the, the so far uh, what i mentioned is about the flexibility in hardware design so again it it also has flexibility in terms of application uh, support or the protection uh, function support okay so as i told uh, different kinds of signals uh, are required to execute different types of protection so further this uh, digital relay can take any form of signal so for example if you have ct uh, it can be 1 ampere or 5 ampere ct the uh, secondary side of ct can be either 1 ampere or 5 ampere you can connect anything similarly ground ct okay similarly power supply can be ac or dc okay you can have different types of temperature sensors different uh, designs of temperature sensors can be connected different designs of digital input and digital output uh, 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 relays uh, can be connected and different types of transducers uh, which give uh, signals uh, can be connected so like that uh, the functions are also uh, designed in a flexible manner so that it can take any form of input that usually exist in any of the substation and uh, just by connecting that particular signal to the relay it will start taking the signal and uh, it will execute whereas in the old and uh, electromechanical or old and relays you need to have multiple devices in order to execute different functions so for example for a voltage and current one device you will have then for temperature you have another device for metering you have another device so like that you, you used to have multiple devices that are connected uh, uh, together in order to protect a single uh, machine like transformer whereas with digital relay it's a single device single box and everything uh, is incorporated into that box and there is no need of any uh, additional box in order to protect the entire uh, power transformer okay so that is one of the uh, advantage of uh, this uh, protection relay okay so these functions uh, that are executed uh, by uh, taking different data in terms of signals are classified at high level into four types okay so one is known as status so status is majorly referred to the summary of what are all the different uh, 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 values uh, that are coming uh, to the relay and majorly it is related to digital okay so for example breakers whether are on or off isolators whether they are on or off okay so uh, any other inputs that are uh, like fan inputs uh, uh, from the transformer whether it is on or off uh, what is the clock status okay so all the different status uh, are basically digital binary information are categorized under the status and represented as a summary okay so the second major uh, function is the metering which is nothing but the analog values okay so by taking these voltages currents uh, from the uh, and temperature on various signals from the field you compute further various data like power energy harmonics uh, uh, power factor demand so all those things whatever you are computing the analog values are represented as the metering values which form as the input to the protection function so apart from the standard signals coming the computed signals are also used for the protection purpose okay then uh, the next major category is the set points or uh, these are called as basically uh, majorly protection related set points so these set points are the flexibility given to the operators or the users in the field where they can define how a particular protection function has to perform or define in the field okay so all relevant fields uh, that needs to be configured for a particular protection function to execute as per his need in the substation or are configured as the set points so these are basically configuration inputs that are given by the operator in order to define how the protection relay has to work okay so the fourth and the last major high level function is the records okay so as i told the major purpose of the digital protection relay is to protect the asset when there is a critical faults in the system okay so as you know the faults in the power system occurs very trans in a transient manner and just comes and goes in a very quick snapshot of time okay so uh, it is very difficult to operator to uh, look at uh, exactly what has happened during the fault okay so definitely he needs uh, uh, the 
data various data collected in the form of records like voltage current waveforms various signal data that is collected during the fault for the post mortem analysis or the post diag uh, diagnosis means uh, why that fault has occurred what is the reason is there any problem in the system is there any uh, check that i need to do so how operator knows uh, uh, whether uh, the uh, uh, the trip that has happened uh, or the uh, fault that has happened is uh, basically uh, a, a like a genuine fault or a temporary fault or uh, e e is it a problem within the system itself so all for all those analysis he requires various data and all those data is collected in the form of records by the uh, digital relay okay so essentially it's all the binary status analog information combined binary and analog information is used to the uh, execute the protection logic and how the protection logic is executed is defined by the set points and all the records uh, that are collected during various faults uh, are used for the post mortem or post uh, uh, diagnostic analysis uh, when the fault occurs okay so these are the high level functions of the digital relay okay so each of this uh, digital protection relay comes with uh, its own uh, relay application software where uh, in the operator connects uh, uh, to the digital relay uh, by giving its ip address so if the relay is having ethernet communication and if you know the ip address of the relay so you configure that ip address here and then you connect to the relay and once you connect to the relay it will display automatically what are the different inputs that are coming what are the different protection functions that are executing and what are the different control commands events all those things uh, you can navigate uh, in the menu here and it all from here itself you can also configure so whatever i told the set points the way uh, the protection function has to behave uh, can also be configured uh, by using this relay software okay so this is uh, like a one to one software means at a time you can connect to only one relay and then configure or view waveforms or you can do anything uh, that is required to be performed in the field uh, by the operator okay so as i told uh, the uh, operator has to define uh, how the uh, specific protection function has to work right so that uh, uh, behavior uh, or the way uh, the, it is configured in the field i am explaining right now so now uh, i have taken uh, phase instantaneous overcurrent as an example and what are the different things that operator will configure in the field in order to make it work okay so the first one is the function uh, so function here refers to phase instantaneous overcurrent and it, it comes under the current category so this can be either enabled or disabled okay so disabled when the moment you say disabled uh, it means that this function will not execute uh, even though if the overcurrent condition occurs it will not execute or do any action okay uh, in order to make it work you need to configure something like uh, you can say uh, trip the breaker okay uh, when any overcurrent occurs uh, you just uh, trip the breaker like that you need to configure okay then uh, this instantaneous overcurrent on which signal uh, like as i told there is a hardware input coming to the relay right so it has to know which hardware signal it has to take okay so that i have mapped here the signal input for this function is ct bank 1 j1 okay so this is the slot or the uh, the back side ray terminal i showed, uh, showed. Uh, is where from the signal is connected okay so i need to select that particular signal input okay second i need to define whether i need to do this uh, over current protection on the phaser of the current or the rms quantity of the current so like that i can choose uh, uh, which uh, form of current uh, computed current value i need to take for the uh, protection purpose okay so that is uh, defined here um, uh, uh, which is a computed uh, quantity from the ct signal okay so the next most important is the pickup or the generally what we call as a threshold okay so it defines like what is the current level uh, beyond which i should consider that as a over current for this function to execute okay so usually that is configured as the times the ct ratio okay so ct ratio uh, you might have heard like it's a primary current by either 5 amperes secondary or 1 ampere secondary so based on that uh, the primary fault current uh, is converted to uh, the equivalent secondary current 
and uh, 10 times that ct ratio or if the 10 times uh, uh, the normal current uh, uh, if it flows in the system i am defining that as an over current function so this particular function will execute if it is enabled when the um, current level reaches this value that is set here okay so second one as you might uh, know very well that uh, there are also directional protection schemes uh, uh, based on the direction of the current you can either um, uh, uh, trip only for the particular direction okay so that direction is also configurable you can set it as either enabled or uh, disabled here okay then uh, you have uh, something called as delay so what this uh, delay means is that so the moment uh, uh, this function sees there is a overcurrent by this much magnitude if you do not configure any delay straight away it will trip the breaker okay but if you say some delay in milliseconds so it will wait for that many milliseconds of time before sending trip signal to the breaker okay so that is defined as the pickup delay basically it's a delay that relay has to wait after it has seen this much current before executing the trip command to the breaker so basically it is used for security purpose like sometimes you will have uh, malfunction in the signal or measured quantities or sometimes there is a temporary uh, spike in the current so in order to avoid unnecessary trips uh, uh, generally this uh, uh, delay signal is uh, delay configuration is provided okay so there is something and also called as dropout delay so what how this dropout delay works is you see a current uh, greater than 10 times ct ratio uh, you configured pickup delay as 50 milliseconds so for example so once the current level crosses this 10 times ct it will wait for 50 milliseconds but within that 50 milliseconds if the signal falls back again to less than this level it will again wait for this signal dropout time before uh, uh, declaring that uh, to trip the breaker so which means uh, uh, once it has picked up and there is a timer within the timer if by any chance signal drops out it will again wait for this much time to see whether the signal is dropped for that particular amount of time uh, so that it, it will it will not execute any control action but again if the sig uh, signal uh, goes back to normal level again uh, the pickup timer picks up and then uh, trips the breaker so basically these delays uh, if you're confused uh, uh, don't worry basically the delays are to handle uh, the uh, control action of the relay and uh, uh, basically to provide some wait time uh, before taking any control action that is the main intention of this uh, delay okay so there is another field called as block uh, dr balakrishna can i dis uh, yeah uh, I, yeah see this pickup delay uh, suppose if yeah. you are giving like a 0.1 second or 0.3 second yeah okay. so within this 0.3 second the dropout uh, delay maybe hmm. it will trigger at uh, point let us assume that the pickup delay is 0.3 seconds at point yes. one suddenly the current magnitude drops down okay. yes so yep. typical value of this dropout delay will be more than the pickup delay or it will be like uh, only for a few milliseconds um so uh, your question is what is the uh, time delay that is given here right yes, so uh, yeah so for example if a pickup delay is set as let's say 100 milliseconds for example okay, okay. so uh, usually if the signal can drop at any point of time uh, yes. it can drop at 20 millisecond or it can drop at 90 millisecond okay yes. so uh, for that purpose uh, uh, what uh, uh, it does is usually there will be some default value mm -hmm. but the relay can automatically adjust this so for example uh, let's say it has dropped at 20 milliseconds and there mm -hmm. is still 80 milliseconds of time okay so this uh, dropout uh, delay can automatically adjust to 80 milliseconds mm -hmm. So, for example, if it is set as 90 millisecond, which is just very close to end, in that yeah. case, it will extend the dropout delay by okay. the default value. So, it is uh, like uh, it's not like straightforward answer. Uh, mm -hmm. It uh, all depends on the experience of the operator uh, okay. on how he has seeing the faults, uh, like uh, especially yeah. temporary faults, uh, how much time it is taking before it is becoming normal. So, based but on the experience, no, they said uh, there is no fixed value for that. Yeah. No, 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 it's always flexible uh, and adaptive. Fine, fine. Yeah, yeah thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. So then uh, you have a block function. Uh, basically, block means uh, 
the function will execute if it is enabled the moment you say block to on what it will do is it will measure everything it will compute everything but it will not trip the breaker basically it will not take any control action okay so why this feature is kept is uh, when you are uh, testing a relay or installing a relay or commissioning the relay you uh, may require a option where you want to see how a relay is measuring and various signals how accurately it's measuring but you do not want to trip a live breaker which is uh, connected to the system in that case you use this block function basically so block is nothing but the protection will run but the control will not happen uh, it is uh, disabled okay then uh, you have uh, various output relays like one to level uh, so what this one to level means uh, basically the in the relay hardware there are 11 digital output relays okay so you can select any one or any two uh, it is up to you that which digital output relay inside the relay hardware will send signal to the breaker if this particular overcurrent condition occurs okay so that you will define here okay so just by defining it doesn't happen so the when you select that output relay one to operate here it is mentioned do not operate but when you select this as operate so when you see a overcurrent function the output relay one status will change and this relay one should be connected to the circuit breaker in uh, input and uh, uh, this will basically execute the trip uh, energize the trip coil and then further the trip coil energization will pull the uh, breaker contacts okay so this you have to properly map to the breaker uh, side also okay so basically it is uh, defining which uh, relay will give the signal to the breaker okay then you have something known as events uh, means uh, uh, whether the relay has to record the events like how many times this overcurrent function has uh, triggered or how many times the current has reached a particular level so all those things you can record as an event for post-mortem analysis and uh, targets uh, uh, means uh, like all the messages or the rec records uh, that you have uh, 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 recorded uh, whether they need to be self reset after some point of time or you can keep it as like unless i see and uh, the operator unless he sees and uh, then uh, resets then only it should happen so self reset means uh, relay itself will reset the information or the memory because it has a shortage of memory after some point of time uh, but uh, otherwise if you do not keep self reset the operator has to manually uh, clean the files uh, uh, which are there in the relay okay so this this is how uh, a practical uh, overcurrent function is configured so similarly uh, I, I am giving just another example of voltage uh, it will be more or less same the uh, other features will be more or less same so but for voltage you, you can see uh, it, it uh, which BT uh, signal it is coming is mentioned here then the mode of voltage uh, whether I need to use line to ground voltage or line to line voltage so that I can mention here and uh, similar to the current I can me measure like what is the uh, pickup uh, so here basically uh, if the voltage reaches 1.5 times the VT ratio uh, I have to consider this as a over voltage okay so similarly i can have uh, delays configured uh, similar to the current uh, i have mentioned uh, earlier okay so this is how the set points for each function so i have just given you example of current and voltage so like that there will be a settings for frequency power uh, differential protection distance protection whatever different protection functions you might have studied all those protection function requires a similar kind of uh, either simpler or I would say much more complex uh, settings that needs to be uh, done by the operator okay so this is one of the uh, very very complex uh, task that needs to be done when uh, a relay is installed in the field and it requires very much of expertise in order to set this because uh, the, if you do anything uh, wrong configuration it will uh, damage the it may there is a chance that it can damage the asset because the relay may not trip and uh, the uh, transformer may even blast uh, in worst case so that's why relay configuration is a very very critical uh, uh, thing that that is being done in the substations okay. so next uh, uh, me, sir. yeah yeah in the previous slide, i'm student okay okay hi yeah hi, tell sir. me in hmm. the previous slide Mm. phases for operation is like any one any two or all three uh, means 
yeah uh, that that's a good question so what uh, it is uh, defining here is uh, uh, if i mean if i mention uh, this configuration as uh, uh, phase phase of operation as any one it means that i have three phases right so yes, if sir. any one phase voltage crosses this level i will take the action here if okay. i select any two only if two phases voltages crosses i will take the action and if it is all three only if all three phase voltages crosses that level i will take the action so it is basically again the flexibility that whether i need to operate for a just a single phase over voltage or i need to wait for at least two or three to also cross okay okay sir. thank you yeah. yeah thanks for asking actually i forgot that yeah uh, then uh, like you have defined the protection settings in the relay and the next major task is the control action uh, means you need to control the breaker so as i told uh, the digital output uh, relay uh, that is present in the relay is connected to some form of uh, output uh, within the relay and that comes as a remote input to the breaker uh, so near the breaker also there will be small electronic device uh, which receives the signals from the relay okay so uh, for a remote input means that uh, uh, the remote input for the breaker is coming from a relay okay so the breaker control can be you can configure within the breaker uh, you can configure this as enable as a remote control or local control okay this if you forgot to configure this as remote uh, uh, control and you kept it as local control then even though relay sends a signal the breaker will not trip okay because you do not give the permission of remote control okay so each breaker has to be given remote control if a device that is upstream either it can be a relay or it can be skeda or anything that wants to control the breaker basically remote control should be enabled if the local control is enabled then only the operator by going near to the relay hardware and by pressing a push button he can con control the breaker means manually he can open or close by pressing a push button okay so this is usually not done only the remote control mechanism is what is being executed okay so this is only done when you are like uh, testing the breaker or uh, installing the breaker or doing any maintenance action on the breaker at that time you disable remote control so that nobody operates uh, in an unauthorized manner and you have control on the breaker control okay then uh, the another important feature the relay of what is the breaker failure detection okay so uh, relay detects a fault sends a signal to the corresponding breaker and the breaker is supposed to trip after some point of time okay usually in milliseconds okay so if by any chance okay so breaker is what what is a breaker breaker is a mechanical device okay mechanical component it has various uh, driving mechanism and operating switches okay if by any chance the breaker component fail to operate okay in that case the fault will not be uh, addressed and the asset will undergo stress okay so in order to avoid such condition if by any chance if a particular breaker didn't operate for a certain duration of time and if the current level is still persisting uh, to a certain level uh, that can be mentioned okay then the relay will automatically send signal to the upstream breaker which is connected which can trip the circuit where the fault occurred okay so relay first trips the local breaker if it doesn't operate by any chance it will wait for some time that is again configurable and then it will immediately sends the signal to upstream breaker so that it will clear the fault okay so like that a, a relay not only can send a communication signal to the local breaker but it will also can send to upstream breaker when it sees a breaker failure okay so this relay uh, uh hmi okay uh, so uh, or which is known as local hmi is a lcd screen where a operator when he is standing in front of this device uh, in the field he can see the line diagram of the circuit like it can be transformer motor or generator he can see various electrical data he can see whether the uh, transformer is energized or deenergized or transformer is not at all connected to the relay so all those things he can see in the local hmi everything uh, he can see here and he can even configure by 
pressing so these are the push buttons what i was mentioning okay uh, if you want to control anything or if you want to configure anything these are the various push buttons uh, which you can use to navigate to the different menus uh, that are shown uh, in the local hma okay at the same time he can also view various metering data phasor diagrams uh, of the voltages and currents okay so when the fault occurred how does a phasor diagram look like uh, when in the normal condition how is the phasor diagram how is the balance of voltages and the currents whether they are balanced uh, uh, state or in the unbalanced state okay so all those things can also be monitored by the local hmi which is nothing but a lcd screen here so same thing everything will also be available in the relay application software which i have shown earlier so remotely also you can do everything Thing. but generally the operators uh, uh, in the substation uh, also look at uh, this uh, because every time they may not have laptops in their hand and uh, or computers uh, nearby okay so uh, it requires various uh, signals um, uh, uh, that needs to be connected to the relay and properly configured and uh, 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 properly installed so that the entire uh, protection relay uh, will operate okay so you can see uh, like these are the uh, relay panels uh, this how a relays will be installed in a control room so you can see these are the relays okay so back side of the relays uh, you can see the wires uh, which are nothing but the various signals uh, that i was mentioning uh, they are coming from the field okay so for example if this is a transformer protection relay so all the various signals of the transformer uh, are coming as signals uh, uh, to this panel and in turn they are going to the relay for the operation okay but in the context of digital substation uh, or the advanced uh, digital substation concept we are avoiding all this wiring and what we are uh, what all is required for a relay is the just a fiber optic communication cable okay so all the signals uh, that are present uh, in the field or digitized in the field itself uh, which are uh, if you may or may not heard they are known as merging units so the job of the merging units is to uh, digitize the entire data in the field near the transformer where it is installed itself and all the digitized data will be communicated on a uh, dual fiber optic cable and the entire data to the relay is just comes by a single fiber optic cable that is connected on the back side okay so this is the advanced uh, digital substation uh, this uh, uh, is a separate concept like what is digital substation and how it works but uh, what i want to convey here is in modern uh, substations uh, you do not see these many wires uh, basically for connecting signals to the transformers okay so, so as i told uh, uh, the communication plays a very critical role especially in the current smart grid domain because uh, everywhere we are saying that uh, everything has to be remotely monitored uh, remotely uh, configured like that okay so even uh, the power grid of india uh, re a few years back they have started the concept of uh, unmanned substation operation means uh, in the remote substations specifically in uh, rural areas or forest areas the substation they, there is not not even a single person okay then how the substation will operate okay so everything has to be remotely operated so for everything to remotely operate there should be a good communication that needs to be offered for that substation okay so that's why every modern digital relay or the any modern substation device comes with wide variety of communication options okay so you can have ethernet based communication uh, it can be no, uh, basic ethernet like uh, rj45 or it can be advanced fiber optic based communication so uh, the advantage of fiber optic is it can support long distance communication uh, over ethernet okay then you have sub various protocols uh, uh, protocols are nothing but the language uh, which relay uh, understands or uh, relay uses to communicate anything so, okay like for a few months like english telugu and hindi are the uh, language uh, that we communicate it has its own syntax uh, like that similarly every protocol has its own syntax uh, using which uh, a, a device can communicate with the other device okay so wide variety of protocols are supported by the uh, relays okay so it can also support usb communication you can just 
plug a usb cable to the relay and can start communicating with it okay so places where ethernet is not possible again specifically in remote areas uh, and rural areas where ethernet is not uh, possible you have to go with again serial based communications so serial based communications are nothing but you lay a dedicated cable uh, uh, between uh, the device that you want to communicate and the uh, uh, remote uh, uh, control center at which you want to communicate with that so like that you need to uh, lay a dedicated cables and uh, these cables will communicate in a serial manner uh, with the uh, corresponding host devices uh, that are present in the substation okay so one of the unique feature of uh, digital uh, relay is the support of wi-fi okay so uh, why uh, can any of the master student uh, uh, answer like uh, why do you think uh, wi-fi is required for a digital relay or do you think this is not required and if required uh, what could be the good application uh, have having wi-fi anyone can answer okay no, no problem okay so in the current uh, digital era so um, as everyone knows that mobile apps are the uh, uh, way how uh, people are managing different things okay similarly for relay also you can have a mobile app and this mobile app you can install in a mobile or a ipod and once a relay is connected to wi-fi and if the, to the same wi-fi if your mobile or ipod is connected that's it you connected to the relay and you will get all that information of the relay okay so without going near to the relay or the machine you get within the distance of wi-fi support all the information into your mobile okay even if you if there is any problem with the equipment or any trip function occurred or any protection function has trip immediately you will get the message into the app that something has happened in the field and operator can quickly take the action so for that purpose even the modern digital relays also support wi-fi okay so as i told uh, uh, the serial communications uh, uh, are used when there is no option of ethernet so these serial communications are connected something like a daisy chain fashion okay so what is this daisy chain fashion means is like you have a, uh, a master station uh, where it want to control to where it wants to communicate with various IEDs. So a cable will be laid in a serial manner, first from this device to the first IED or the first relay. And then from this relay, the cable will go to second relay. And from this relay, the cable will go to third relay. So like that, they're connected in a daisy chain fashion, OK? So at any point of time, if this device wants to communicate with this device, so the message has to go like this. So it has to come here, it has to go here, it has to come here, and it has to go here, OK? Only the intended relay that is supposed to take the message uh, will take that message and further it will not send to the downstream uh, devices okay so that is the uh, like you will have uh, disadvantages uh, and delays uh, in communication when you have uh, serial based uh, communications okay so as i told uh, previously uh, time synchronization is very critical for a digital relays uh, especially with pmus and all uh, 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 the time synchronization input is very critical and they come as a satellite input uh, to the uh, IRIGB time code generator, which is a separate device in the substation. And from the device through a cable, all the timing information is communicated to various uh, uh, devices that are present in the substation. Okay. So with that, we have completed the high level features of the uh, digital uh, relays. Okay. So next, uh, we will quickly go to digital uh, logic design, OK? And based on that, uh, if, if we have uh, some more time, uh, I will cover other, or we can have uh, another session if possible, OK? So the digital relay logic design uh, is a. Uh, we have about maybe 10, 15 minutes. We'll extend so that okay. uh, you can cover. Yes. Sure. So I will cover this uh, digital uh, relay uh, logic design within that, OK? Yeah. So uh, this uh, digital logic, uh, I hope uh, uh, there is no inconvenience to see. Uh, actually, this is a uh, logic diagram of how a uh, protection function is designed in the field. OK, so uh, so for example, I am explaining the uh, digital relay logic design of uh, phase over voltage protection. OK, so this phase over voltage protection 
uh, first thing I need to define how this function has to behave in the field. Okay, so first disable means uh, do not take any action uh, when the over voltage occurs. Uh, trip means uh, trip the breaker uh, uh, by sending a control command to the breaker. Alarm means uh, don't trip the breaker, but only give alarm to the user that over voltage condition has occurred. Uh, latched alarm means uh, the, there is an alarm condition in the field, but uh, the alarm uh, can come when there is an over voltage, but that over voltage will go off after some time. Okay, so the moment this over voltage goes off, this alarm will become off. Okay, so in order to avoid that condition, uh, the, uh, another term called latched alarm is introduced where until the operator sees that some alarm has come and he acknowledges, then only that alarm will go. So otherwise, what will happen? There will be over voltage condition, voltage will cross, alarm will come. But the moment voltage becomes normal, the alarm will disappear. So operator will never know that there is a over voltage alarm. Okay. So that's why this latched alarm has been introduced where unless the operator acknowledges that there is he has seen the alarm, then only it will go. Okay. Another option is configurable. Configurable means uh, uh, do a, a either uh, any of the two actions or you can define your own action like apart from trip alarm you want to communicate to upstream device or you want to inform to the operator through uh, uh, message in his app so different things if you want to yourself you can also configure it as configurable okay so basically this function is defining how this protection function has to behave in the field means what action it has to take when it sees over voltage condition okay so that is one thing second thing as i told block uh, uh, is like whether to take any control action or not is uh, defined by the block unless it is unblocked then only it will execute okay now it we have defined uh, how what action it has to take and whether it is blocked or not okay so once this is clear then in order to execute the over voltage function we need voltage okay so from where that voltage will come so voltage will come from vt okay so again that vt can be delta type start type connection so it can be line to line voltage line to ground voltage so all those computations will happen and based on the user uh, specification whether to use line to ground or line to line voltage so particular voltage measured by the relay is taken as the input and it will come to the logic okay so what is the logic required here to check whether the voltage is greater than the pickup uh, or the threshold that is configured to say it as an over voltage function okay so as over voltage function uh, or if there is a over voltage in the system it will impact basically the insulation of the equipments okay so all the equipments are designed for insulation of the equipments are designed for certain voltage levels so over voltage condition basically creates stress on the insulation of the various equipments and even can damage the insulation okay so that's why uh, either you can take immediate action means once the voltage crosses pick up you can uh, inform the operator immediately that uh, the phase voltage operation has picked up okay so uh, you can see pick up pkp means it has picked up but not executed if you configure a delay like as i explained uh, so once it has crossed it will start the timer and it will wait until this timer uh, is crossed and the signal is sustained uh, uh, for that particular duration of time okay and once it is sustained then it will check whether i need to operate only one phase voltage or two phase or three phase voltage all three phases are crossing this level and based on the uh, values that i see and based on the configuration then i will operate the breaker okay so pkp means uh, it the element has just picked up it didn't take any action as defined here but once it sustains during the timer, it will be operating and mentions as okay, phase over voltage one has operated. Okay, so this message will come to the operator. Okay, so like that, every protection uh, logic design is uh, basically defined in terms of how the protection function has to behave, what signals are required for that protection function, what logic it has to execute whether it is a timer, uh, there is a timer uh, available or not uh, before taking the decision and on what basis I need to take the decision and how I need to inform the operator, okay? After picked up, what I have to inform and after operate, what I have to inform, okay? And when I say operate, the action is to either 
trip the breaker alarm the operator or execute uh, do a latched alarm or do an action which is defined by the user uh, like both trip and alarm or all three possible combinations or any other thing that user says so all those things will be executed so this is the how a digital logic design will be uh, uh, designed in the field and it will be common for everything so for example uh, this is over voltage right if you take under voltage function the only difference is the everything voltage coming will be same and here you are checking whether the uh, 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 under voltage condition is existing or not okay so for that uh, um, uh, the for the under voltage fun function uh, the another way of executing logic here is here you have a fixed timer okay you the fixed timer user will configure or it will be adjusting adaptively uh, based on the situation okay there is also another way of uh, connecting uh, like uh, uh, configuring this uh, delay in the form of a curve okay so basically when under voltage occurs under voltage usually occurs when there is a high load on the system okay so uh, over under overload condition there can be possible of under voltage okay so uh, before uh, the under voltage function takes any action uh, the load uh, uh, may come to normal level or some load may be shut down so those things can happen so i need to wait until that time okay so that time uh, of waiting here instead of having a fixed delay uh, or the uh, adjustable delay here it is defined as a curve means how much the voltage is dropping based on that the time of operation will be decided so you can choose the curve uh, different types of curves uh, with multipliers will be given and you can choose any curve okay so if my voltage falls to 70 percent uh, and if i choose this curve then my time of operation will be uh, four seconds so like that so basically uh, it's a curve uh, mechanism so that enough time is given uh, uh, for the other uh, uh, load control mechanisms to take action and voltage may bring back to normal level if still the voltage is under voltage level it doesn't come back then it will take uh, the any uh, uh, like a control action or the pickup action like whatever is done in the earlier case okay so uh, this is another way of uh, configuring the uh, timer okay so th then you have instantaneous overcurrent um, uh, uh, here basically you are checking for whether the current is crossing a threshold and then execute uh, uh, or the control action based on the timer okay so uh, uh, we will uh, stop by this uh, 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 diagram so uh, here i want to uh, say few things uh, that that are being done in the field for overcurrent function okay so apart from voltage the major difference in the logic diagram is you also require a direction okay so direction of the current whether it's a directional relay or non-directional relay that is defined and if it is a directional relay where it's a forward direction or reverse direction so that also has to be given as input to the logic okay so the uh, the direction of the current will be analyzed by the relay and it will be given as input to the logic for executing okay so apart from that there can be certain cases where i do not want this phase instantaneous overcurrent to operate okay so such conditions can be like a cold load pickup so i don't know if you have heard about this cold load pickup condition uh, so what it means is like when you have any distribution circuit uh, which is being switched off for a long interval of time okay so basically the distribution circuit is supplying power to downstream transformers various uh, loads uh, including the motors uh, capacitor banks or whatever it may be so if your uh, distribution circuit is switched off for a prolonged time so all the equipments will go to steady state then the moment you energize the uh, distribution circuit you see sudden spike uh, in the current because of the inrush current or the magnetization current of the transformer or the capacitor or the motor starting current being higher so that will be usually considered as a over current by the relay okay so that's why when you uh, are switching any distribution circuit after a prolonged uh, outage time uh, you uh, usually uh, configure or consider that as a cold load pickup time and 
give that intelligence to the relay that do not operate the overcurrent protection function if i am energizing a distribution circuit after a prolonged time okay so so that this will not consider it as a overcurrent and it will not unnecessarily again uh, trip that particular circuit uh, and uh, avoiding the power supply to restore okay the second one is the auto reclose uh, which you might have heard so auto recloser or a recloser action is an action by the breaker where it checks whether the fault is permanent or temporary so for example uh, there is a overcurrent condition and breaker has tripped so it will check it has to check whether it's a temporary fault or a permanent fault okay if it's a temporary fault it will die down in few milliseconds okay so basically the auto recloser uh, operates the breaker on and off for, for three to four times just to ensure whether the it is uh, temporary fault or a permanent fault okay so once it confirms that it's a permanent fault then only it will execute the action so until the auto recloser executes that three to four cycles of operation so again this function cannot take any action okay so that is the another another option is manually the user has blocked this function to operate then also it cannot take action so like that in a practical condition the protection logic not only has to look at uh, what it has to execute or on what signal it is operating but it also has to consider various other practical conditions into consideration before executing any action uh, like tripping the breaker or uh, giving alarm to the user okay so uh, actually i have some more content but uh, considering the time i would like to stop here uh, uh, yeah a any questions Yeah, so feel free to ask uh, maybe a couple of questions. We okay. Uh, Doctor Ravi, any final comments or any questions? Uh, since yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. You, can, you can maybe uh, propose a vote of thanks and uh, that we will. Oh, one minute, one minute, Pradeep. Student, you have, to, you have to write an exam. So, better speaker is here. So, to clarify your doubt, if you have any. Remember that there will be an exam for, uh, on this industry lecture. So just uh, maybe you will not get. For the opportunity to clarify your doubt, so better you can ask the speaker if you have any doubt. Okay, that's it. We can now go, and go for the vote. vote. To, uh, propose vote of thanks and maybe some concluding remarks from your side. And then we can close. Yeah, uh, thank you, Professor uh, Dr. Balakrishnan. So, uh, yeah. this is really an insight into the uh, practical uh, way of uh, protection schemes that will be um, uh, handled, in the, handled by the uh, GE and ABB. Okay, so even in the classes, we teach uh, the basic theory type of thing, but uh, the way you highlighted the things like how these things will be installed. And uh, uh, the thing we have thank you very much for your uh, yeah. uh, presentation. Yeah. yeah, thank, thank you. you, thank you, sir. Thank you, yeah, yeah, thank you, Pradeep, sir. thank you, Sarkar, sir. Thank you, thank you, yeah, okay, thanks, Dr. Balakrishna. Yeah. So, we are